Imagine a leader who not only speaks of change but embodies it in every aspect of his leadership. This is the story of President Ibrahim Traoré of Burkina Faso, a leader who, unlike many of his counterparts, has embraced his nation's heritage, choosing to represent his people over westernized standards. His actions from wearing a military uniform at international summits to enforcing local traditions in court attire signify his commitment to Burkina Faso's pride and self-reliance. But why does this matter for Burkina Faso and Africa as a whole? Well, Trara's policies offer more than just symbolic value. They're empowering the nation economically and culturally. Could this be a model for a new era of African independence? Before we dive in, please subscribe to the African web channel and ring the bell icon. One of Trare's most visible changes, his choice of attire. When he attended the recent Russia-Africa summit, he wore his military uniform, standing out among African leaders dressed in custom-tailored suits. This decision wasn't just a fashion choice, it was a bold statement. It symbolized his alignment with the everyday struggles of his people and his rejection of unnecessary extravagance. His attire tells the world that he stands shoulder to shoulder with his people, showing that his priorities lie not in appearances but in actions that elevate Burkina Faso. Think about it. How many leaders do you see genuinely reflecting the everyday lives of their citizens through their public personas? One of Traoré's key initiatives has been implementing Faso Danferni, a traditional Burkinabe fabric, as the standard attire for magistrates and clerks in court hearings. This requirement is more than just a dress code. It's a move to boost local pride and economic self-reliance. By mandating this fabric, Traoré has created an avenue to support Burkinabe artisans, reduce the government's reliance on imported uniforms, and save costs. Faso Danfani is not just any fabric. It's woven with stories, a symbol of the resilience and creativity of Burkina Faso's people. Can you think of a more powerful way to promote national identity? In an age where globalization often leads to the erosion of local cultures, Trari's stance is a rare one, challenging Burkina Faso's citizens to take pride in their heritage. Trari's influence extends beyond the judiciary. Last year, he introduced a phased reform, making Faso Danfani the official school uniform fabric over the next four years. This change not only instills cultural pride among young students, but also stimulates the local textile industry, creating jobs and ensuring that wealth generated within the country stays within the community. Imagine walking into a school where every child wears a fabric that symbolizes their country's history and resilience. This reform represents a significant investment in the youth and Burkina Faso's future, nurturing a generation proud of its roots. Across Africa, such initiatives could inspire other nations to reflect on their cultural values and heritage, encouraging future leaders to foster a similar sense of pride in their respective countries. In another transformative move, Traoré mandated that Burkina Faso would no longer import uniforms for police and military personnel. This decision led to the establishment of a textile factory in Ouagadougou, a landmark initiative in Burkina Faso's push for economic independence. This factory now produces all uniforms locally, creating jobs and reducing foreign dependency. In the long term, domestic manufacturing could make Burkina Faso less vulnerable to global supply chain destructions and more resilient in the face of international pressures. Trare's policies extend to Burkina Faso's gold industry as well. Burkina Faso, a major gold producer, lacked a domestic refinery, exporting raw gold ore to Europe for processing. Trare saw the economic and employment potential here and spearheaded the construction of the nation's first gold refinery. This facility keeps wealth within Burkina Faso, ensures that more jobs are created locally, and reduces dependency on foreign entities for valuable resources. With this refinery, Trore is making it clear. Burkina Faso's resources belong to its people. The gold refinery is more than an economic project. It's a beacon of national pride and economic autonomy. Is this move setting a precedent for other African nations with rich mineral resources to develop internal refining capabilities? Could Burkina Faso be leading the charge in the creation of an African gold standard? Trare's push for economic independence doesn't stop with gold. He's tackling inefficiencies in agriculture, like Burkina Faso's paradox of exporting tomatoes while importing tomato paste. To bridge this gap, he initiated the construction of a local tomato processing plant. This facility will not only keep more of the agricultural value chain within the country, but also create jobs and strengthen food security. 
Burkina Faso's agricultural policy changes highlight an essential shift toward keeping wealth from natural resources within the country. If replicated, this could redefine agricultural production across the continent, reducing Africa's dependence on imported processed goods. In the healthcare sector, Trora has overseen the development of an $80 million world-class medical facility. Built through a public-private partnership, the facility reflects his balanced approach to healthcare. By investing in this project, Trore is not only enhancing healthcare access for his people, but also reducing the country's dependency on foreign medical facilities. His emphasis on self-sufficiency is clear. Every step he takes prioritizes national empowerment over foreign reliance. Imagine a Burkina Faso where citizens no longer have to travel abroad for specialized treatment. This approach doesn't just strengthen the healthcare system, it restores faith in local institutions and creates a sustainable path forward for Burkina Faso's health sector. To foster entrepreneurship, Traoré has implemented historic tax cuts for young entrepreneurs, making it easier for startups to thrive. He understands that empowering the younger generation to build businesses will create jobs, stimulate innovation, and lay the foundation for a more diverse economy. Additionally, his partnerships with the private sector are increasing access to capital, helping young people overcome financial barriers to business development. Through these reforms, Traoré is building an economy driven by the Burkina Bay people. For the Burkina Bay people, what could be more impactful than creating an economic environment where young people are not just participants, but drivers of growth and innovation? One of Traoré's most forward-thinking policies is popular shareholding, which allows citizens to become stakeholders in public enterprises. By opening up 20% of the government's telecommunications company to the public, Traoré raised $60 million, which was reinvested into essential infrastructure projects. In approach rare for African leadership, Traoré upholds civic freedoms and openly supports his people's right to protest, even if it's against his administration. His belief in serving rather than ruling is reshaping perceptions of leadership in Burkina Faso and beyond, setting a model of transparency and accountability. Facing complex security challenges, Traoré has revitalized the Burkina Bay military in its battle against insurgents, with young Burkina Bay answering the call to defend their homeland. His recent partnership with Russia for military support has sparked international attention especially from Western nations hesitant to fully back Burkina Faso's fight against terrorism. This strategic alliance underscores his commitment to securing Burkina Faso's sovereignty and independence. President Ibrahim Traoré is crafting a vision for Burkina Faso that challenges traditional norms, promotes cultural pride, and fosters economic independence. His policies are more than just symbolic gestures. They're tangible steps toward a self-sufficient Burkina Faso that could inspire similar movements across Africa. What do you think about Traoré's unique approach? Could his policies set a new standard for African governance? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this deep dive, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the African web for more insights on Africa's transformative leaders.